He told us this prayer before us as Christians. We are the light of the world. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Once again, it's my pleasure to grace your TV screen with another interesting episode of The Parables. Yes, my name is Unzubechi Frank and today on the program, I'll be talking parables with the Venerable Samuel Emanga. He is the vicar of St. Stephen Sanguikan Church, Kabusa, and the rural dean, Kabusa Dinri. And for today, we'll be considering the parable of the wedding feast recorded in the book of Matthew 22. 1 to 14. Please, Daddy, you help us read. Matthew yes. chapter 22 from verse 1 to 14. The 22nd chapter of the gospel was recorded by St. Matthew. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My husband and father's cattle are killed. All things are ready. Come to the wedding. And they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his own business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who are invited we are not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as we find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to his servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Wow. Okay, so before we look at this parable, I just want to get your thoughts on the idea behind parable. Like, what do you think made Jesus to speak in parables? Yeah, um, parables are short, fictitious narratives of something which might really occur in life or nature from which moral lessons are drawn. And uh, Parables sometimes are used and are very important because the, 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 the narratives easily capture the attention of the audience. And there will, there will be this hunger, there will be this willingness to unravel the, the, the reason or the lessons in, in embedded in it. Jesus spoke in parables because actually Jesus will not cast his precious gem. Uh, among swines. Mm. You will observe from scripture that each time Jesus spoke to the multitudes, he used parables. Yeah. But when he is with, with, with his disciples, when he sat with his disciples, he spoke to them plainly. Like he, if, you, if you go to Matthew chapter 13, you know, 10 to 11 and verse 13, as the disciples tried to find out, why, did you, why do you speak to them in the parables? And he, he told them clearly that for you, you are the one that are meant to know the mysteries of heaven. But for them, it is spoken to them so that hearing they may hear, they may not understand. Mm. Seeing they may see, they will not be able to, 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 to perceive. So Jesus particularly, for you to understand Jesus and understand his world, you must have a relationship with, <laughs> with him. Mm. If you don't have relationship, there is no closeness. If there is no bond between you and Jesus, Really, there is, you, you will not be able to decipher what actually has a mind. So for the, the multitudes, 
uh, they, they, they hear in preparables. But if you want to get him clearly, if you want to understand him in all intents and purposes, you mm. must have a relationship with him. So do you speak in parables? Yeah, I do sometimes. Uh, I do. I do. But, but actually, um, uh, it's, it's not fashionable now, but, but it's something that is worth doing. It's, no, uh, I was thinking like it's more of a preferred way of teaching these days. Yeah, so. it's, 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 it's really, really, really is is actually good to use parables okay. because uh, <laughs> parables, as as I said, in, enables you to use uh, s certain symbols mm. that can be identified okay. by people to convey truth. And bring out moral lessons, like in normal African cosmology. You know, uh, it is usually said that uh, every bona fide African ought to understand parable. parable. And the expectation is that you don't. One should not explain the meaning of parable to you. They say that if one does that, it means that the dowry paid on the person's mother is, 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 is in vain. And also. Uh, one of the renowned uh, literary icons, Chinua <laughs> Chebe, said in Things Fall Apart mm. that parables are the palm, is the palm oil which we words are eating. Yeah. So when, when, you, when you speak in parables, it shows your, your mastery of the subject matter. Mm. You really understand the issues and you can, you can really convey it. Well, thanks for that explanation. That's quite an interesting one. So now let's go back to the parable that we are discussing about. That is the parable of the wedding feast. You know, this particular parable seems somehow, but well, I think it has its bearing on the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. So how would you describe the story and the meaning of this parable? Yeah. In, in, in this the, the parable we just looked at, Jesus used wedding ceremony as it were. Uh, with all the preparations and activities that goes with it to convey the truth of the, the, the kingdom of God. Mm. And, uh, and he needed to, to do that. You know, in the wedding where we were read, people were invited. There was this invitation beforehand. So the date of the wedding uh, didn't take the invitees by surprise. They, they all knew. Yeah. And, and also by way of his, his explanation, even for us, like the kingdom of God, the invitation is, is, is going on. Exactly. The invitation is going on. People are being invited through the, word, the, the gospel message that is, is, is going on. Uh, so the invitation is on now. And drawing from scripture, John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the, the message of uh, Jesus, as he's been preached and people receive it, is the invitation that they have to that wedding feast. And when the Bible says also in John chapter 3, verse 3, you must be born again. These are all invitations. These, that's, that's your invitation card. That's the identity mm -hmm. you're going to use to enter to, to, to assess the kingdom. So, and, and, and several issues also. Now, the necessary furnishing, like in where we read, all the necessary things that, will, that should make the guests feel be comfortable, enjoy the, the day was made available. He said if the, the, the awesome has been created, the fatting cow has been created, all is ready. Mm. It uh, has been made ready. For the kingdom of God, the things that will make us comfortable in the kingdom is being made ready. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I'm done doing that, I'm going to come back and take you with, with, with me so that where I am, there you will be also. So the, it is being made ready. Things are ready. And also, you, you, you will understand that after Jesus had finished that, he will come back. And every man must have that consciousness that Jesus is going to come back to now usher us into this feast, into the, the, the kingdom of God. But the issue is this, are we, are we ready? Mm. Mm. Are we ready? Mm. Now, you know, looking at that wedding, mm. the wedding feast, you know, mm. I wanted to ask, or let me ask, what was a wedding like, you know, as at the time of this parable in the Jewish religion? And why would Jesus liken it to the kingdom of God? You know, in the, in, in the Jewish religion and in the Jewish tra tradition, weddings are usually very important events. Very important. Very, very important. And the families, they spare nothing to make a wedding sure a, grand, a, a grand mm. celebration. 
Top notch. And, and for, for weddings in the Jewish culture, you know, it's, it, it doesn't have a free access entrance. Hmm. You must be invited. Friends are invited. And also relations are invited beforehand. Okay. <laughs> beforehand. So, so the similarities are there. And also, the, the wedding garment, the, we, sometimes the, the, the celebrants usually will make some garments and distribute to people, mm. or they will decide this the kind of garment is going to wear. Ashebi, you know, the, the, the Ashebi you have today yeah. didn't start today. It, 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 it has that, been there. You know, it has, it, like, yeah. it, it, it has been there. Yeah. So, so the, the preparation is always grand. And as I said, people are invited. Like you find out that the wedding in Kenya of Galilee, Jesus was invited in, in verse 2 of yes. John chapter 2. So Jesus and his disciples were, were invited. So if you are not invited into the traditional Jewish wedding, you are not supposed to, to, to be, be there. there. And also, things, the, 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 the nourishment uh, is usually su su surplus. We found out that the wedding I referred to in John chapter 2, a time yeah. came when the wine ran I out finished, yeah. and they knew that crisis was going to brew. If you come to a wedding in the mi midway and the, 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 the refreshment, uh, you know, gets is exhausted, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. So that, that's, that's the, the, the kind of wedding we had there. So now the, this story recorded that those invited to this wedding, <laughs> that they refused to come. Yeah. And that the, the king's servants who brought the joyful message, mm. they were mistreated and even killed. Yeah. C can you explain what this means in relevance to the Christian Christianity of today? Yeah, uh, in, in relevance to the, the today's Christianity, this invitation is, is going on. And we find out that in our day and time, those supposedly that had this faith in the past, the, the faith of several of us are waning. Mm. We are no more as, as vibrant and as dogged as we used to, to, to be. Lazity is, is setting in, compromise is setting in. So we are actually making light of that invitation now. Considering the kind of life that, that several Christians are living, the kind of compromise people are getting involved in, as if the reality of uh, the kingdom of God is, is not very strong. And also, in our day and time, we find that several preachers of the gospel have had to be, be, be maltreated. Even some had to pay with their lives. You know, you remember the story of a particular woman that, that was killed for Preaching. proclaiming the, the, the gospel. Yeah. So it is relevant in our time. It's happening every day. Christian, Christianity is under serious threat in our, in our day and time. Actually, this is a season that it is, is more difficult to be a Christian, to be a preacher of the gospel mm. now than, be that, than before. I want us to look at something that happened in verses 11. Uh, to 13. I think I'll, I'll read that. Okay. Verse 11 to 13 says, The king went in to look at the guest and saw a man who was not wearing wedding clothes. Twelve. Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The king asked him. But the man said nothing. Then the king told the servant, Tie him up, hand and foot, and throw him outside in the dark. There he will cry and gnash his teeth. Okay, so it's interesting because I said, you know, weddings, everybody, like you said, in those days had, uh, who had a wedding would give all his guests a garment. That's what's been practiced then. And it, even now, you know, this way, the rich and the poor, will be, will, will, everybody, there will be no will discrimination. Dissolve, yeah. Everybody is there mm -hmm. and uh, everybody is well dressed. But unfortunately, some people would reject the garment, you know, mm -hmm. and they would choose to enter mm -hmm. wearing their own clothes. Mm -hmm. No, but looking at what this means, it, I think it speaks more of a person who has been offered the righteousness of Christ, yeah. but expects to be able to, you know, to inherit salvation through his own work of righteousness. Yeah. What do you have to say about that? Now, the, the, the truth of the matter is this. Now, the, the salvation offer is free because Jesus had paid the price. But everyone must appropriate salvation to, to, to himself. Mm. The young man that entered there without the, the wedding garment made a choice 
because the wedding garment was available, he chose not to. And for you to be there, you must put on the a particular garment. <laughs> garment. So if you if you if you refuse the garment, then refuse attendance. Mm. So that's the, 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 the truth of the matter. And, and it's the, the same thing. That the only thing that will admit us to the kingdom of God is righteousness. There is no compromise. There is no shortcut to it. You can't jump through the fence. If you do, they will, you'll be tossed back. So that is how it is. That righteousness is the key. That right, righteousness is the garment. Garment of righteousness. A life that is spotless, a life that has been brought under the cross, that has been washed by the blood of Jesus, and the person is living right. Mm. Not live, you, you, you may start right, but you must end right. With, with the speed with which you started must be the speed with which you will end. end. If you're going to make it, because the king will come to check. Okay. Because you're not going to, the king, the, the king is going to come to possible. check. You're, you're, you're not going to hide yeah. in, the, in the crowd. Yeah. You're not going to hide yourself in the crowd. You're going to single everyone out, and everyone will give account of his stewardship. He will look at you personally. So that's the truth of the matter. So there's no shortcuts. So if anyone wants to be in church, you want to enjoy the things of God, but you don't, but you don't want to you know, order your life towards God, towards righteousness, you are mistaken. At the end of it all, it's going to, the person is going to lose out big time. Big time. Mm -hmm. But thanks for that explanation. Like viewers, right now we want to go on a short break. When we come back, we'll continue from where we stopped. So please stay tuned. Welcome back, viewers. If you're just joining us, we've been talking parables with the venerable Samuel Emanga, the vicar of St. Stephen's Anglican Church, Kabusa, and the rural dean, Kabusa Dimri. And we've been considering the parable of the wedding feast as recorded in Matthew chapter 22 from verse 1 to 14. Moving on, um, help us there. Yeah. You know, Jesus summarized this parable with a, a statement where he said that for many are invited, but few are chosen. Yeah. So what is the take home from this statement? Now, um, another t translation had it as uh, many are called a few are chosen. Are chosen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is a, a, a question to every child of God, any believer as we speak. Because not many that are hearing the gospel today will make it to the end. That's true. Not many that are in church today will make it to the end. Some will fall by the wayside. Not many people that are zealous, that, are, that seem to be committed today, we make it to, to, to the end. So it's actually a caution that we must be careful that we remain true to our faith up to the end. Because it is not the beginning of the race that matters, it's the, the, the ending. Now, if, if you look at, and this um, collaborates what we have in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, say that, therefore let him who thinks that he stands Take heed, lest he falls. So, no matter your spirituality now, make sure that you continue to fan it to flare. Mm. You continue to kindle it to ensure that it continues to burn to, to, to the end. Because if you, had, if you have committed yourself to the Lord, you've done so well and you're doing well. If you don't take it to the very end, you're not going to be part of those that are going to be in the kingdom. So, it, it actually brings fear to, to me. Because it's not how I started that actually will matter. Mm. It's how I'm going to mm. end. So it, it, it puts me in check in my utterance, in my dealings, because I don't know when that end will come. Because the moment a man breathes, the, he's, he's last. The end has come. There is no, no other negotiation. So for a layman, for someone who is watching and will be mm. like, okay, how do I keep this fire burning in me? What, what, what would be your advice for the person? Yeah, the, the, the advice is this. As you have received this invitation to come to, to the Lord, you must find it to flame. Mm. Find it to flame by the study of the Word of God. The Word of God. Continuously. By, by prayer, by fellowship. Because they said, iron sharpens iron. So don't, don't stay aloof. 
And also don't get to a point that you begin to think that you have become so spiritual that you will not fall. Because mm. the devil is looking around. He said, the Bible said the, the devil moves around like a rolling lion seeking whom to devour. He's waiting for that weak moment to, mm. to strike. So we must remain committed and guard jealously our feet. And that will only happen as we march our lives in the, the, the word of God daily. Become a word addict. Let the word of God drive our life. Let our life be a life of prayer. You know, when the Bible says that pray without ceasing, a, a man that is a man of prayer, wherever you are, you are praying, you are conscious, you are, you are tuned to heaven. Uh, t whenever temptation comes, you will jump over it. You will overcome it. So that is going to help, uh, help us to move on. Mm. You know, this parable somehow is likened to the parable of the great feast. Yeah. Well, we can say that the occasion is different, mm -hmm. but I think there are some important distinctions. Yeah. But, but, and there are two, there should be one or two lessons to add from yeah. there. Yeah, sure. Now, there, you know, the, the man talked about a certain man threw a feast, a, a supper, and invited people. A, a bit of similarities, yeah. but what, what I can actually draw from that, from that, the excuse the people gave for not coming sometimes the excuses are quite genuine okay. seemingly mm. you know one said i just bought a grant and let you to, to to work on it i just married a wife and all that <laughs> those excuses may look okay and not bad for the kingdom of god in following christ mm. there is no excuse that is justified justifiable i see if you don't follow if you don't heed to the invitation if you don't come to the Lord, whatever excuse you give, even if in our, in our day, those are the things that are denied people correct following. The issue of consideration of family. How will I take care of my family? How will I take care of my, my children? Oh, my job. I find out that sometimes when people don't have jobs, you see them committed in, in, in the church. Then when a good job comes, you have this in the person in Bible study, see the person in prayer meeting, even Sunday service. Sometimes when they come, they come like special guests. So those excuses are not tenable. No excuse is tenable before God in terms to have, or as it has to do with it, I have follow it. We must follow in the midst of all those issues around us. So even the excuses that are mm. some, sometimes welcoming and... Yeah, it, could, it could look genuine, but the point is not acceptable. Wow. Nothing must deny you our follow, well, would hinder our following. We must follow, follow and follow through. I think I give many excuses most times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, but there, there, there is tendency for, for one to, to, to do that. But the point is this, uh, we must ensure no excuse denies us from following Christ. We must follow. The grace is there. If we ask God for grace, he's going to do that. Because God is not looking for loafers to serve him. Mm. He's not looking for those that, are, uh, uh, that, that, that don't have anything doing. It's looking for men and women, because we, those, all those that God called in the, the scripture, we are those that were in the thick of their profession. They were doing something, they were, they were men and women with, with strong hands, and they became relevant in the hands of God. And it's not going to be any different. Otherwise, when somebody told me that, why I knew that God called me was because uh, my business scattered. I said, no, if you scatter your business, you mean that you'll be, you'll be useless in, in, in kingdom business. You can't, God cannot scatter your business to, to, to call you. All those that God called were in the thick of their business. They were doing well, mm. and, and, and God called them. That is what God is looking at. I want to see a millionaire serving the Lord, serving the Lord with his time, serving the Lord with, with, with his money. And that is what God is looking at for. You know, I was going to ask, how a Christian can ensure qualifications to invitation to a wedding feast? Ensure qualification. Actually, we are, we, we are qualified by Christ. God is not expecting us to do any new thing. All that is expected to be done has been done. Mm. Christ has paid the price. But it's just for us to believe him, to receive him as, as our personal Lord and Savior, yeah. and to walk with him. And part of the ways to do that, if your commitment will be seen to, to be right, is by the diligent study of this. The, 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 the word of God, scripture, mm. be a word at it. Don't allow anything to deny you time with the scriptures. Being prayerful, a man of prayer, 
the man of consistent prayer life, pray, pray about every, everything. The Bible says pray without ceasing, wherever you are, be a man of prayer. When you're a man of prayer, it means that you are in tune with heaven all the time. There is nowhere the, the devil can come in. As he roars, when he comes around, he says that the fire of God around you is, so, is burning so strong. Yeah. He, can, he can, can get to you. Fellowship. Don't deny fellowship. Must ensure that you, you enjoy fellowship with other believers. So those are the things that helps us to fan our, our flame, continually fan, fan, fan it into flame and make it born and born and born more, more and more. Thanks for that explanation. Now, you know, coming from a clergyman view, you know, I know from experience, you should know whether Christians, whether churches are responding to God's invitation uh, to eternal life with him. Do you think they're respond they are responding positively or negatively? In our, in our day and time, I must say that something is missing. We are, we, are, we are missing it. Even in terms of the message, the invitation itself, oh. something is going wrong with the message. Because these days, you hardly go to the pulpit and hear the message of eternal life, message of hell and heaven. Mm. The prosperity, prosperity message I've message. taken over, the issue of chasing uh, signs and wonders and miracles I've taken over. And even for, for, for members, they usually we go to a place where all those uh, razzmatazz will, will, will be done. So they miss something is actually fundamentally wrong. But the issue is this. God is, gonna, is not going to lower his standard for our sake. Mm. The same standard he placed on those that had gone ahead of us is the same standard he expects of us. Yeah. So if we are going to make it, we must get back there. The, the message of eternal life is the message. That's the message of the scripture. Whatever message you preach in, on pulpit that does not take to people to heaven is a wasted effort. When you preach and people blow the whistle, oh, ride right on pastor and all that, and then they feel good. They mm -hmm. can feel good in church. But actually, they are preparing, you are preparing them to feel good, to, to feel the pain of hell. Mm. That's because the message must be such. You know, a time came that when, in, 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 in scripture, when you preach, half of men are preached and began to weep and say, what shall we do to be saved? But today, even in response to altar call, some altar call are giving as if the man of God is begging on okay. the congregation, please okay. come out, come out. And those that are even coming out, you don't see that, that, that uh, seriousness. seriousness you see somebody that is coming to answer an altar call, his hand is in his, his, his pocket, he's, he's chewing gum. So you find out that you know, even, even, even the conversion, the, 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 there's, there's no serious bet. And that's why when you look at them in the next few weeks, they are back to, to, to the world. So we must, we must get back to the message of salvation. And that is the only help we can give to people. Wow. Mm -hmm. We must get back to the message of salvation. Now, I want to add to what has been said that, you know, Jesus Christ did not come to earth merely to die on the cross for you to pray and work out your salvation with your own works of righteousness. He came to be your righteousness, to clothe you in righteousness. And as you confess that you are the righteousness of Christ in God, as you believe that you are saved by His grace, as you believe your sins are forgiven in the past, present and future, your thoughts and your lifestyle will start to conform to that way. So that's about it on this edition of the program, viewers. Uh, we want to appreciate you, our guest, for coming, Thank the you. Venerable Samuel Emanga. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome. All right, viewers, uh, we hope that you enjoyed every bit of today's edition of the program. And please don't forget to subscribe to our social media handles as displayed on your TV screen. And we invite you to join us same time, same station next week for another interesting edition. Till then, I am Nzubechi Frank and thanks for watching.